had been no movies at all shown in town for probably 20 years or a bit more. And uh, we went in and had a look at the old cinema and decided as a, as a group that, you know, maybe we could try and do something with it. And we did. We rushed around and got it, got all the old projectors running and got it going. And, um, you know, we'd just take it as it came. And you'd get a, a month where you get very, very few people turn up. The next month there'd be a lot turn up. And everybody that came, you know, you got a big, big crowd or a little crowd. They all enjoyed themselves. They all seemed to enjoy getting out and, and going to the movies. And that was, that was a big hit for us. We thought that if people enjoy themselves, what we were doing was right. The Olympia was revived through the ingenuity of the locals. It was all about paint, sandpaper, elbow grease and bringing together the skills needed for the job. Commercial cinema might not have been viable in a town this size, but on the night the Olympia reopened, one third of the population turned up. The movies were back in Bombala. The issue for many small towns is distance. There may be a multiplex showing the latest Hollywood blockbusters, but it's an hour and a quarter drive each way and the best part of half a tank of petrol. In the town of Stratford, Victoria, two people have created an alternative to the mainstream and found an audience in their own backyard. We were on our way round to Raymond Island um, to visit family and we saw this beautiful old courthouse and it had a for sale sign in, out the front. So we were lucky the building was open that day. We wandered through and fell in love. Um, I had always wanted to open a gallery and the theatre was just um, a positive that came along with it. <laughs> so uh, we started the long process of, of renovating it. We just thought, oh well, it's worth doing it. So we ended up spending more money in the theatre <laughs> in the theatre garden that we did in the gallery, you know, it went, they went crazy. We get 5% of the population to fill our cinema here that want to see obscure Australian short film and art house film that's not available to them anywhere else. Well? Well what? Ralph, you can't stay in there. Why not? Well, we agreed. We're here, aren't we? Yes, we are. And what about your part of the agreement? The people of Stratford wanted us, this centre to evolve, and film really was the way they've determined to us they wanted to evolve from our first opening night and screening shorts. The conversation that's, that evolved from that really stemmed for the film, regular films to be shown. We've got quite a large outline community of smaller towns which may only have a post office and a local shop and it's giving them an opportunity to come into a, a town and talk to people in other small and outlying communities so it's really providing a great venue for people for the community to get together and integrate with each other the larger the town the greater the options and a place like Shepparton is brimming with them. On offer are a mainstream multiplex, a more art house film club that's been running since the 1970s and a unique experience that's been on the town's social calendar for over a decade. Last night we had our annual Shepparton Shorts Film Festival which was 90% Australian films, short films. We had a sellout crowd and our audience just thought it was fabulous. The Short Film Festival has always had, no matter the venue, we've had really, really good audiences. You know, people come from a long way away, they don't just come from, from Shepparton, um, they come from Echuca or Kyabram or Yaroa to see um, this variety of film that you don't necessarily see. And it's created its own emphasis in a way, that people know that it's coming, it's, you know, it's once a year and it's limited tickets. You know, people get together, tables or groups of them to come. So catch up with people, talk a bit about the film, but enjoy, enjoy some time together. So it's really a social, it's, it's a social thing as much as enjoying the films. At Maruya, which is a town on the southeast coast of New South Wales, we, we, our cinema closed a few years ago. 
and as a, a community film group, we, we um, run films whenever we can, every month. We've got up to 100 members, and the community appreciates being able to do that rather than travel distances to a uh, mainstream cinema. Uh, as for a proportion of, of the film mix we have, we try to, to vary it. Half foreign film, half um, English-speaking films, and we have a regular uh, foreign film festival. And this year's film festival will be an Australian film festival. So we're looking forward to that, and, and the community is looking forward to it as well. No, like the, the, the main, the blockbusters were advertised on TV. So they were the ones that you always got your big crowds for. But when it came down to the older people in town, they all seemed to like to come for the, for the Australian stuff. People respond well to Australian content in film because they can refle it reflects themselves. They can see bits about their family or it's our sense of humour, so it's the quirky things about being Australian, snippets of culture, um, so people relate to that. And when we look at film and what we want to screen, we would always make sure we've got a, a number of Australian films. That's, that's one of our criteria, is always to have Australian. So I think that the audience appreciates that as well. That will be uh, $467.30, please. We, we'd normally deal through a distributor if we're going to get movies. So you, you ring that, person, that distributor up and you say, we'd like this particular movie on such a date. And that's usually not such a big problem. But when it comes back to the Australian movies, and it doesn't matter whether they're uh, the feature movies or short films, you try and find out who's got the copyright, who's actually looking after it. And that can be... A, you, know, you could spend a month or more looking, trying to find out who actually owns the copyright on, on just one short film. And a lot of times we've given up. We've just gone off and got something more popular because it's easier. People in our community really are wanting to see Australian short films. To have something that they can get up Monday morning and be thinking about on Monday afternoon just makes their lives a little bit better and they're really making the most of that. Our ideal process for getting short films is to have a compilation of short films on a DVD that consists of, say, 20 short films, and then we can run them as we want over the year, two or three at a time. To be honest, if we could just go to one place to get any Australian content, that'd be great. You know, make, make, just ring someone up and say, we'd like to watch this, or we'd like to show this, and get that into town. And at a reasonable price, considering we're, you know, we're a small community, and that's not just us, that's everybody out there that's doing this. If we can keep that rolling for people, it brings them back, it's good for us, it's good for the community, and it's good for the, for the film industry.